Today is such a little house on the prayer every day. Just feels like a good day to watch Little House on the Prairie. I never hear anybody my age talk about that show. But it's a really good show. Hey Cake Nistas, it's Marisha. And today I'm going to give you guys 10 Cake Nista baking tips that you may or may not know. These are some great tips if you want to bake a great cake. Start off with your normal recipe. Apply these tips. Your cake should come out a little better than it would have. So, if you haven't done so yet, subscribe to the channel, press on the notification bell, and let's jump right into it. <laughs> Tip number one is room temperature everything. Want to make sure that your eggs, your milk, your butter is all room temperature. You can actually leave your butter and your eggs out overnight and they won't go bad. Your milk, mm, just leave it out for about an hour and it should be okay. Now if your butter is cold, of course, how are you going to cream it? It'll be all chunky, you'll probably have to pop it in the microwave and you won't get that full volume that you need when you're creaming your batter. And then when your eggs are cold, they're less likely to be able to really whip up and fluff up because those proteins will be so tight, it's like, why even try? And if you are in a crunch, you can actually put eggs in warm water for about 10 minutes or so and they should come down to room temperature in no time. <laughs> Tip number two, properly measure your flour. Now you may think that you're measuring properly, and you may be, because these are tips that you may or may not know. However, I'm gonna tell you guys how to properly measure. So to properly measure your flour, you're actually going to put your measuring cup on a flat surface, and then you're going to use a spoon or something else to pour that flour right into the cup. And then when you're done with that, you're going to level it off with a knife, and that is how you properly measure your flour. Number three, measure your flour again after you've sifted it. When I would sift my flour and then put it back in the measuring cup, it was always a little bit over one cup. And it would be over about a tablespoon. So try sifting it, put it back into that measuring cup, and see what you get then. Tip number four, all the box cake mixes know this one. Add pudding in the mix. You can add a box of instant or regular pudding into your cake mix. It could be vanilla pudding. Hey, it could even be chocolate. Let me tell you one time, I actually put vanilla cake with chocolate pudding just to see what it would taste like. It tasted like a very, very mild velvet cake and I did that in my Rudy the Red Nose Reindeer cake. Very interesting. Don't, just stick with the same colors. Vanilla, vanilla, chocolate. Five, non-stick dreams. The old school way is really like the butter and then the flour on the inside of your pan and then to just shake out the flour. That tends to make like a little bit of a crust layer. And then sometimes you would have those cakes where they would have that little bit of flour dust. You could kind of flip it over and go and some like brown fairy fluffiness would blow off. My favorite way to make my pans non-stick, I find it so much easier to just place either a square or put a large piece of parchment in the bottom of the cake pan and then just make a ring with my finger and then just cut the ring out. I do that every time. And then I finish the cake pan off with some nonstick spray around the inside of the pan. Nonstick dreams. That's because when your cake does stick, it's a nightmare. Number six, weigh your batter. So one thing that is so irritating is when you do like three different cakes and then you're going to stack them and you see you've got one cake that's this little, one cake that's this big. You know, when you cut into it, you just wanna see nice, even layers of cake. So the best way to do that is to measure your cake batter. Of course, you can put it into measuring cups and go by that way, but the easiest way for me is to actually weigh them out. And I just went ahead, put the cake pan on the scale, canceled it out to zero, and then poured my batter into about a half or three quarters of the way. Then go ahead, switch out your cake pans and do the same for the next one. Number seven, bake evenly. Now there are something called bake even strips, okay? And they actually do really help your cake to bake evenly so that when you take the cake out of the oven, there isn't a huge dome on top. And it also helps to keep the cake very, very moist. And then you'll also notice less browning on the sides. I've seen Wilton brand and then I've also seen knockoff brands from Wish, for instance, and they work just as well and they're only a couple of dollars. But if you don't have those bake even strips or you can't find them, you can also use a wet rag. Just go ahead, douse your rag or towel in some water and then roll it up, put it around the pan and then you would just use a safety pin to clip it in place. 
bake even strips DIY. If you don't have your bake even strips, or sometimes even if you do, you'll want to level your cake off. You can actually take the cake out of the pan, and then what you would do is hold a long, maybe serrated or a bread knife, some type of slicing knife. Keep your arm to your side like this, and then you're just sawing with that knife while rotating the cake at the same time. Start from the outside after you go all around the cake and then work to the middle of the cake to slice that whole dome off. But then, of course, there's a much easier way. You could leave the cake in the pan and then actually level it off using the pan. You just have to judge based on what your cake is doing. Number nine. DIY cake mix. This is so convenient, especially if you do a lot of baking. When I thought of this, I said, why didn't I think of it sooner? I have a lot of Tupperware containers that I actually use to make the cake mixes in anyway. So what I'll do is just put all of those ingredients together that are in my cake recipe, just the dry ingredients, mix them in together or sift them in together, whatever I would typically do, and then I'll just put a lid on it and I'll leave it out. And when it's ready for me within the week, I'll go ahead and just add my wet ingredients and it literally saves so much time. Just knowing that I have my cake mix already on the counter brings a lot of ease to my soul, unfortunately. You could do that for chocolate, you could do that for vanilla, literally any cake recipe. Typically, flour, baking powder, salt, baking soda, cocoa powder, and your sugar. Whatever dry ingredients go into your cake. And then tip number 10, make your own cake flour. For one cup of all-purpose flour, you're going to remove two tablespoons of that flour from that cup and replace it with two tablespoons of cornstarch. And this really creates that cake flour action. You're going to sift that at least three times. Sift it, make it nice and fluffy. And you can do this ahead of time and it definitely makes a big difference in making your cakes fluffier and lighter and more delicious, trust me. Those are my 10 Cake Mista baking tips. I do have a bonus tip, and this is actually very real, and I've always wanted to say this. Bonus tip! Let's get excited. You have to be happy when you're baking. And I'm so serious, you guys, Anytime that I've ever went into a cake project or baking situation where I just didn't feel confident about it, I wasn't happy, I was like, oh, let me just get it over with, uh, er. It never came out right, ever, literally. And those would be the nights especially where I would just do the whole cake, sit back, look at it, think it looked horrible, and then I'd be like, you know what, let me just erase this whole thing, meaning take all the buttercream off and the finding, and just start over, and I'm going into it positively, I'd even say a prayer, I'd do a little mini meditation, do whatever you have to do, because sometimes it really does matter, especially when you're in a crunch, and then I'm like, you know what, it's going to be great, and I'm just going to let my magic flow, and literally every single time, it makes a huge difference, like I can't tell you guys enough. So you have to be positive, speak positivity into your cake because you think you're speaking to your cake and you kind of are, but you're really speaking to yourself. So if you say this is going to look amazing, this is going to be beautiful, I'm going to get this thing together, it's going to be on point, I'm not going to be overwhelmingly tired to where I want to pass out, your cake will come out better because you're going to be, of course, hearing these positive reinforcements and you're going to believe them. Hopefully you believe yourself because if not, I'm sorry. Be happy while you're baking. It will taste better, it will look better. It will just be better. Better, better. Better, better, better. So, once again, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I hope that you've subscribed to the channel. If you have, thank you so much. I love you. I love you, huh? Yes. Mm. And then, I want you guys to comment below because I know a lot of you have some baking tips that you would love to share and I would love to hear them. Yeah, what are your little secrets? What do you do, Cake Mista? Because I would love to know. Hmm. Tell me something good. Ah! So, yeah, I will see you guys in the next video. Bye, Cake Mista.